I can now t turn to Ron Benioff from the Natural, um, from the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. I think it'd be fair to characterise the LEDS Global Partnership as a as a group that started with the um, low carbon and mitigation agenda and moved towards the climate resilience. I had the pleasure to work <coughs> with Ron on in the LEDS Global Partnership over the last couple of years, and we've had a big issue about branding and naming ourselves, amongst other things, because because of that issue coming from the mitigation. But s s clearly, as you've just said, Susanna, synergies is what uh, what developing countries need practically. That's the reality for people on the ground, uh, as we've really heard from Bangladesh. So I, I'm, I'm, I will pass you the, the, the mic, Ron. Just just just. To just to say that, Ron, officially you have a job actually in the United States, although I gather you live somewhere else at the moment. But um, you're manager of the multilateral programs, the United States National Renewable Energy Lab, NREL. Um, but what you've been doing is leading um, the LEDS Global Partnership Secretariat, also uh, in partnership with CDK and the work of the Greengrass Growth Best Practices Initiative, and working on the Clean Energy Solutions Center, which is a Clean Energy Ministerial Initiative of the United States Government. So, Ron, it's great to have you here um, and to share some of your thoughts about not only how action is happening, but how we can drive scale through knowledge networks. Thank you very much, Sam, and um, thank you all for, for joining it. It's a, I think, very important discussion and very timely as well. Uh, I'll um, touch on three issues. I'll touch on sort of what, what do we mean when we say knowledge sharing? What are the, what are the mechanics? Uh, most importantly, how does it actually result in action? And then a few challenges going forward so we can get to the scale and ambition desired. First, a, a quick word, the, the LEDS Global Partnership. Um, if you're not already engaged and following, please, please join us, ledsgp.org. I have a few fact sheets here as well. It's an open forum. We have more than 115 countries international institutions, uh, donors, multilateral, bilateral, technical institutes who are working together through regional platforms in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. We just had a big uh, event with our Asian partners, 240 folks gathering, um, and through global working groups on analysis topics, planning topics, sector measures, and, and finance, all with the idea of harnessing the power of collective action and collective peer learning <laughs> to um, assist each other in doing our jobs better. And ultimately, the goal is to assist the developing countries with um, low emission, climate resilient development strategies. And the development word is very important. The emphasis is really on helping countries advance development objectives through a transformation to climate resilient, low carbon activities. Um, so please uh, um, join us, get engaged uh, if you're not already. So in terms of the um, how, uh, wh what are the mechanics? What do we mean in knowledge sharing? Because this is a broad topic. To me, there's sort of five elements of it. There's peer exchange uh, and, and peer learning forums and communities. Um, so communities like the LEDS Global Partnership, communities um, like uh, the R40 initiative, um, communities like the Climate and Clean Air Coalition, and many other communities. And they interact both. Um, in person and on the web, uh, you know, virtually uh, through through many different um, activities at all levels of government, organized by topic, by government, by stakeholder group. It's a very diverse um, set of peer exchange forums. Second is in-depth training. I mean, there, there's a, a a number of programs that do a, a good job of delivering training on specific technical topics. And, and I actually think this is something we've we've heard from a lot of the countries we work with that we're under investing in <coughs> the the level of depth needed in training. So there's a lot of here's a one day training on some analysis tools or on on energy issues. But what countries have said, for example, in the energy policy area, I want to go somewhere and I want to spend two weeks learning about renewable energy policy options or building efficiency measures. And there, there isn't a lot of support, frankly, for that kind of in-depth training. So just a, an observation there. Um, a third area is, is really peer-to-peer -peer advisory support. Um, and this is something we've um, doing more of through the LEDS Global Partnership and, and other programs, where as countries are, are dealing with challenges, link them up with a peer in another country who's worked on the same problem so that they can, they can learn from each other uh, and, and benefit from each other's experience. Uh, and that can be very powerful and, and matchmake countries who have needs with existing programs. 
Fourth are technical resources. You know, work, there's a lot of opportunity for knowledge sharing through toolkits, um, case studies, um, data. I, I think one area we underinvest in here is, is really being creative about putting this together in, in videos and sort of dynamic and forms, interactive forms. So we have a challenge there. And then, and then collaboration on kind of the cutting edge of shared products. I think there's a huge amount of knowledge sharing that, that can and does happen uh, and, and more, more can occur. So as I was thinking about, all right, so what does this mean? How does this, how does this really result in change? Um, I came up with an acronym. Um, I hope it's useful, at least useful for me in organizing the thinking. I can, and, and the emphasis here is on I because the I has, has three elements to it. And I think it's appropriate because ultimately what we're trying to do here is empower individuals in countries to take action. And, and it's very important, and we, we've, had to, we've had to do this with the Let's Gold Partnership, to remind ourselves continually the goal of the partnership is not to, to get us all together and feel like we're building this big institution and we're having lots of workshops. The goal of the partnership is to assist countries in moving action forward, and we have to be very rigorous about how we evaluate our progress based on what's happening in the ground. So the three I's, inspiration. We've seen a huge power of countries coming together and inspiring each other. Um, for example, uh, we had a, a deputy minister from Kenya who came to one of the first Let's Go Partnership meetings that Sam and Caroline uh, hoping, uh, hosted at Latimer House. And has, he saw what other countries were doing on low carbon planning. He all of a sudden got it. To this point, his staff had been saying, hey, we're trying to work on this lead strategy, help us out. And he was like, leads, namas, why should I care? You know, there's all these different initiatives. But after he saw what Mexico was doing and Colombia and a number of other countries in terms of really um, developing a transformative vision and harnessing action across ministries, he went back and he, he designated 20 staff to work on their low carbon plan in Kenya because he was inspired by what other countries uh, were doing. Same thing recently at the Asia event, the Philippines talked a lot about their Ecotown initiative and the investment they're making at the community level in climate resilient low emission development. And a number of countries were inspired and Nepal is one to sort of think about, all right, how can we, how can we adapt this model? Um, second is innovation. You know, there's nothing like working on a cutting edge approach that really gets people excited. And, and, and I think for these networks and peer learning to, to have value, you can't just work on, okay, here's some access to some data sets and uh, here's some training on kind of basic building codes. People want to people be at the leading edge and we all want to work together. Um, so for example, there's work that E3G is doing <coughs> through Let's Go Partnership with support from CDKN working on finance innovation for lead strategies, looking at what, what are the innovative approaches in creating green funds and budget allocation and credit enhancement mechanisms in, in a number of countries in Latin America. We're also extending that in Kenya and uh, India and Mexico, and that's generating a real buzz. It makes it come alive. People are excited about sort of trying something new. Um, it's not only in developing countries, though. Through the, the Clean Energy Ministerial, we're working on a 21st century power partnership that has has Denmark and it has um, the US and it has Ireland and Australia, um, the UK, a number of other countries who are all looking at high amounts of renewable energy penetration into the grid, so a variable resource and challenges, how to integrate that with effective um, grid management strategies and, and demand response so that we can have a, a grid that can really uh, move away from dependence on fossil fuel and enable us to get to 50, 60 percent renewable penetration. And the, but it's all innovative stuff. Nobody knows how to do it, right? So we're bringing the grid operators together and the regulators to learn from each other. The third I is information. Um, information uh, on, on tools um, such as, so for example, in the LEDS Global Partnership, we have a low carbon transport toolkit because this is an area of, of strong interest. It it's, uh, tends to be overlooked for whatever reason by a lot of bilateral assistance programs. And so there's been a huge demand for, give me examples of what options are available for bus rapid transit and other, other, other tools. Um, best practice studies, as Sam mentioned, involved in this big green growth best practice analysis to pull together examples of what's work, what's not working. I mean, of course, training is another form for information. So those are the three I's, <coughs> um, inspiration, innovation, and information. Um, the CA of the CAN is collective action. Um, 
uh, because I think there's a huge power in mobilizing and harnessing resources. So getting the countries, getting the donors, getting the technical institutes to work together. One area we see this really work extremely well is on development impact assessment. So the partnership has invested in improved tools to help countries not just look at a marginal abatement cost curve and figure out what's our lowest cost option to reduce emissions, but to really understand the development benefits, because at the end of the day, this is about development. And so we cross countries and across donors, there's a big effort to work on, on tools for estimating and visualizing the, the poverty reduction benefits, the local air pollution benefits, the energy security benefits, uh, and, and other related social uh, and economic benefits. And this has been a very powerful uh, approach uh, for working together. Another example the Ledge um, GP for is working with um, the North African and Arab countries on a regional roadmap um, on green economy. And the power there is the countries are working together on a, on a kind of common approach and strategy and, and we're advising. And then finally, the end is really about networking and, and, and networking to um, give countries access to expertise and to programs who can provide assistance. So we have an advisory service under the Ledge GP, for example, that provides quick response assistance to countries on analysis, on planning, and on sector measures and finance measures. It's been very, uh, in a short amount of time at least, we, we're seeing great promise. Um, we, we helped uh, Ivory Coast on their bioenergy strategy link up with the FAO that's now providing more in-depth ongoing assistance on their bioenergy strategy. We helped Mauritius in transition from uh, a green uh, grant program to a revolving loan fund to make it more sustainable. We have uh, another uh, 15 requests that we're looking at from Asian countries coming out of the Asian workshop, mm -hmm. so that's very powerful. And then, yeah, and then finally, a few challenges just going forward for all of us to keep in mind. The three, really. One is we need to deepen, I think, the learning and the, and the capacity building. We need to make sure we're, we're not too superficial, but really picking a few topics of common interest so finance, um, benefits, um, innovative sector measures. Um, second is we look at integrated approaches. There's a huge array of, of networks and platforms, but we, we, don't, we could do more to better link them, especially bringing in the private sector and community groups that we, we tend to overlook. And then third, we have to stay ambitious. Uh, and, you know, we have to really think about how to get to scale and, and keep that challenge in front of us. Ron, thank you very much.